The old Fort Brown has always been very special to me. That's because my grandfather, Frank Williams, was a cavalry soldier here, and my father, Frank Williams Jr., was born here in this old Army hospital. But this isn't my story. But what you're going to see in here tonight is something we never expected. White noise. Are the voices of the dead coming through to us? That's a subject in an upcoming movie called White Noise. It's about a strange idea called electronic voice phenomenon, the belief by some that a mere handheld tape recorder can capture the voice of someone who died long ago. At the Old Fort Brown, there are many stories of the sights and sounds of ghostly soldiers roaming the grounds of what is now the UT Brownsville campus. Do the dead speak? Yes, they do. George Acosta is a paranormal investigator. He and his co-worker, Victor Perez, track down ghosts by using dowsing rods to find their energy and a tape recorder, they say, to pick up voices of ghosts. It was at the old stockade, or army jail, built in 1904, now the campus art building, that things became eerie. Using a tape recorder, I asked questions. None of us heard any response. But this is how my unusual interview went. Listen to the playback closely, and you will hear what some say is a man's voice answering. Do you need help? No, what's your name? Those who heard the voice say it sounds like a man of African-American descent. In the early 1900s, there were hundreds of black soldiers or buffalo soldiers at Fort Brown. Was this the voice of a black soldier still sitting in his jail cell? Or is it the crossing of frequencies, a voice picked up on our recorder from another radio source? I hear voices on the tape, and I know that no one in the group was talking. There was no distortion from uh, air conditioners or anything. These are real voices talking to us. Yes, voices. And as the night hours passed, our crew and company went to the front of the old army jailhouse. It's here where some people say they've seen a little boy playing and then disappear suddenly right in front of them. Mike Pierce took the tape recorder to the area of the sightings and asked questions. What you were about to hear stunned the group. Listen to this again. Is it the voice of that little boy? Did he die during the yellow fever epidemic in the 1800s? We found an old photograph of that building. Ironically, a little boy is captured playing near there. No one knows for certain who it might be. Nonetheless, those recordings brought some in the group to tears. The voices caught on tape certainly had an effect on all who listened. I, I am really, I'm really amazed, and uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't expect much, so I got a lot more than I expected tonight, and uh, I'm a true believer now. The Roman Catholic Church's teachings have always talked of the afterlife. We believe in the afterlife. We believe that there is some connection still between our departed loved ones. What that is precisely, we don't know. That's the mystery of faith. But it's faith in God that is a center, says Father Matthew. Anything that deviates from God is not acceptable to the church. While the church encourages its flock not to get involved in dealing with the dead, there are real warnings from witches whose business it is to conjure up the dead. Jody is a Wiccan white witch. He says he believes ghosts can follow you home. Overall, I think that if uh, you're playing with it, if you're doing it for really no reason at all, just kind of tapping into it, best thing to do is to leave it alone. Delving into the world of the unknown may carry warnings, but that depends on whether you believe that the dead are still talking. Are these stories real or not? It's obviously something that's going to be argued till the end of time. At the Old Fort Brown, I'm Patricia Guillermo, Action 4 News.